Yeah, and while we have the while you have the floor, Dr. Palmer, uh, JWS, they've heard about heavy metals and baby food like Gerber. What do you tell parents uh, uh, of your patients? They're gonna they're now, trying to rekindle our baby food debate yeah, from back then. There's a baby. lot of there's always been there's always been unfortunately I know this sounds bad, but there's always been like heavy metals in baby food. I know that sounds bad, but that's I don't think that that's new. But, I, but um, and again, they allow certain things in baby food and they allow certain things in baby formula and they allow certain things in our food. Um, because, so this was the reason why I stopped eating a long time ago when I was not, you know, plant-based. I stopped eating um, tuna because I read somewhere that they let a certain amount of rat hair in the tuna. <laughs> and I was like, what? <laughs> That kind of blew my world. Um, I wasn't in love with tuna anyway. So that was just a good excuse to say, I just, I can't do it anymore. So, so I'm not a rat here. Okay, that's good. I guess that enhances the flavor. Well, because, you know, when they catch the tuna and it's on the dock, they're, you know, animals running in between and hairs come out and they can't sift it out. Mm. I mean, it's reality. Um, and so, but I just happened to read that. And it, it just totally to flip my world upside down. So well, who, give, who gives a rat's blank about it right there anyway? <laughs> pun, pun intended, huh? Just eat the tuna. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm saying that to say there's always been a certain love of some heavy metals, I think. And there's and there's some ar I think I've read arsenic too, certain levels of arsenic in um baby products in the formula, I know. Um but it's at a level where they are saying it's okay. And I often tell my parents about this and I tell them just to make your own food. I mean, it's it's gonna take you an extra step, but that's the answer. You have to make it yourself. Now we're talking about foods being sprayed and, and that would put another level of, okay, make sure that you're getting something that's organic and non-GMO. But I don't promote baby foods to my patients at all, never. I don't. No. So, um, <laughs> yes. What you say? We're we're gonna rekindle this baby formula debate <laughs> we had back when we had the baby formula. For the, I remember somebody saying, "Make your own food." He got jumped on, but I'm not gonna come up. No, with but that I'm well, make, keeping it keeping it simple. Meaning, if you are if you are fixing something for yourself, yeah, then you know, take a small portion of that. Don't put any butter and salt, pepper. Don't season it, and just. Do that piece for the baby. So whatever you're making for yourself, because the baby needs the same needs nutrients. Mm -hmm. So you know, I, I often tell them to start with veggies anyway. So the first year, I mean, the first six months when we start eating, we're doing veggies. So whatever you're eating veggie wise, put some off for the baby, puree it, make it safe as far as the texture for them, and that's what you use. Organic and non-GMO. Um, this question we touched upon, but what are some of the ways that body naturally expels those toxins? Does drinking alkaline and water regularly help to expedite the process? Alkaline as the body helps in general, but you know, we talk about heavy metals and oxidative stress. You want to, um, things like zeolite or dimaceous earth or bitten clay can uh, bind a lot of heavy metals in the gut. So that's one way. Uh, toxins in general create uh, oxidative stress. And so large amounts of antioxidants will help uh, put leafy greens, sea vegetables, and the like. Uh, those things help in terms of stabilizing the free radicals. You know, these molecules contribute to damage by creating free radicals, and you need to stabilize those free radicals. So, so the first line of defense is to avoid them, minimize the first step in nutrition is what you don't eat. So you know, reduce your levels of glyphosate as well as other toxic chemicals to the extent you can. And then even though even on organic or maybe naturally grown things, you have trace amounts. So even you bring in a lower amount in, so then you then use the healthy nutrients of the healthy food to then combat the toxic effect of the small amounts of these chemicals that come in. So you 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 kind of you you hit it for the two prong method: reduce the intake, ingestion of it uh, as low as possible, uh, and uh, bring in high nutrients that can help your body fight it off or stabilize it. 
Uh, let's see. Jazz of them, I've heard that washing fruits and veggies for a few minutes and baking soda cleans up toxins greatly, over 90%. And washing clothes and brush your teeth with baking soda could this help? What, so we all say about baking soda. Well, I just I'll let I'll just say something quickly, Dr. Atkins. Um, that will be the skin, the outside, but the um, these chemicals are absorbed into the bodies of the soil and also of the fruits and the vegetables. So we end up you end up in the same place because you're only washing the outside. Okay. I agree. <clears throat> so uh, Tex Houston talks about Joseph Pizanro. His book, The Toxin Solution, talks about kidney detox and says ginkgo biloba uh, is used uh, to help with glyphosate toxicity on the kidneys. Uh, anybody want to comment on that? I'm not familiar with that method of detox, but ginkgo biloba helps dilate small blood vessels, so improve circulation. So if you're trying to improve circulation to those small blood vessels, um, like the brain as well. But um, yeah, I you know I, I agree. The um, for to remove glyphosates, I mean it, it can be very helpful for the things to take the supplements that bind to toxins like the zeolide, as you mentioned, the bentonite and, and uh, clay, diatomaceous earth and uh, things of that nature. And, you know, just trying to make changes and not keep uh, reintroducing um, the, the wrong foods, foods that are um, toxic in. Um, I have a, a reference article um, uh, I just wanted to mention when I have a chance. I don't know. Do you, you now, if you have anything you want to share, share a screen, you feel free to do so. I uh, have it on another computer, so I apologize. I didn't have it on this computer. Oh, no but, problem. But it, it's called Breakfast with the Dose of Roundup with a question mark. And it says, Weed Killer in 289 Million Cancer Verdict found, oat cereal, found in Oat Cereal and Granola Bars. And this is Wednesday, August 15, 2018 by... A toxicologist, Dr. Alexis Timken, T E M T E M as in Mary K I M. But uh, and that's that's an interesting article. In and actually, she tests the levels for different uh, foods, mainly oat cereals, some orange juices, and things like that. But um, it says in her discussion, it says that. Um, um, E, the e, Environmental Working Group, EWG, calculated. Oh, you froze. 0 0.01 milligrams of glyphosate phosphate per day. To reach this maximum dose, one would only have to eat a, a single 60 gram serving of food with glyphosate levels of 160 parts per billion or PPB. The majority of the majority of the samples of the conventional oat products from the EWG study exceeded the 160. Hmm. And so, yeah, I'm looking at that article now. Yeah. Uh, how, how much? You know, when you say how much is too much, I mean it's like how much poison is too much. You know, or how much radiation is too much, you know, um, you know, something that's toxic to our body, it's hard, you know, it's hard to have acceptable amounts, but clearly there are too much in these products. And I, this article, if anybody goes to it, has a whole list of, of foods and, and what they, their test results are and many of the things you'll recognize in here, the foods and uh, brands you'll recognize here. But um, there were some that had none detected ND or very. I don't know if I went out. I don't know how much. Yeah, how you much blanked out just a minute there. Yeah, but so anyway, but that's a good article, good reference article, and you can see how they tested some of these um, foods. I'm going to put that, uh, I'm going to place that on a banner. Okay. And so, uh, and that'll give you a chance to um, <clears throat> take a look at it and also put it on a, 
uh, sticker. Another kind of natural way to detox it, your body is um, a sauna. And if you don't have one, uh, is just going, it's been hot, just going out and sweating. I think that's what other cultures do sweat lodges and, you know, they go places where they let their pores open and let toxins come out. Uh, we don't do that as a tradition over here, but I think it's something that, I mean, of course we have spas that we can go to, but I think it's something that we should probably start thinking about again and getting back to doing the, the simple things. Yeah, I agree. And, and and especially getting outdoors, fresh air, sunshine, this is the mm -hmm. time of year to do it. Uh, but even during the winter times in certain parts, you know, we live in the South and certain parts of the country, it's not unreasonable to go out even during the winters. We have mild winters, of course, a place where you don't have mild winters, it's, you know, another thing. So uh, getting a sauna or going to a gym with a sauna during those times would be very helpful. But I think it's it's important for us to focus and be very intentional about our health, be intentional about what we eat, uh, especially about what we eat. Because, you know, again, toxic, this is just one example we wanted to discuss to give an example of how uh, ubiquitous these things are uh, in, in, uh, in our environment. And so we have to be aware because oftentimes people come in with health conditions and well, you know, I eat healthy and, 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 you know, I'm reasonable. I do things in moderation, but yet I have high blood pressure or my kidneys are failing or whatever the case is. Well, these toxins are building up in our system. Uh, and, and, and it's not just the people who are eating, you know, fast food every day, you know, people eating the slow so-called healthy food are consuming foods that you think are healthy, but are loaded with these chemicals because of the processing, because of how things are raised. And, and that's why, you know, we use the food classification system uh, in terms of uh, informing people how to select food that's grown in a natural environment, uh, how to avoid foods that's over-processed, not only once you get it from the supermarket, but foods are overly processed before it gets to the supermarket. And this is an example of how that's done. So, uh, you know, backyard gardening, growing your own food, getting, you know, controlling your soil. Uh, you can't do everything. We understand that. But you take, you know, every thousand mile journey starts with the first step. And so you have to take that first step and the next step after that, you continue to educate yourself. You continue to make smart decisions, you know, start, you know, you know shopping at your local farmer's markets, you know, getting organic, getting local, sustainably grown. Uh, growing as much as you can yourself, doing time-restricted uh, eating. So you have fasting periods. The body can heal itself during fasting periods. So there are a lot of different approaches to this. Uh, and so uh, we don't want to give you this information to overwhelm you with doom and gloom and make it seem like it's hopeless. It's not hopeless. You just have to wake up and be conscious and be intentional about how you live your life. Uh, we're intentional about a lot of things. You know, people... You know, we go buy a car, they do all sorts of things, buying a car. It's probably, buying a car is probably the worst investment you can make. If people spend weeks and months, you know, searching and looking for prices and analyzing, going drive, test drive, and kicking the tires and all that stuff. And, you know, before they buy a car, but then they go and get something to eat. And uh, they just, you know, go over to some random fast food place and grab something and put it in their mouth. And so, you know, there your body, what is your body worth compared to your car? <laughs> You know, it's worth you know, infinitely more, but but we, we take a great care in choosing our car and taking care of our car, and we have little thought in terms of how we take care of our bodies, and we need to flip that. We need to flip that uh, uh, very soon. Can I respond to, Tiffany put in a statement, Johnson Robbins, about, and you put a highlight, babies only need, yeah. So yes, that's why I said six months. We, I try to get mommies to breastfeed, for the first six months and some some will do it and some have difficulty because they have to return to work um it's rare that i see somebody go all the way to nine months um, with just exclusively breastfeeding now breast milk in addition to foods we i try to get them to do for two years but exclusive breastfeeding definitely six months nine months becomes a little bit more difficult for mommies because the demand here in the states on mothers they got to go back to work um so they're not as relaxed they're not producing as much milk the baby is requiring more because a nine month old was very active 
So that reality doesn't happen a lot here in the United States, but um, it's, I'm sure it's possible. But most of the time here, we say um, six months. Great, great information. Um, I so wanted to say a, something. Uh huh. Oh, yeah. I just wanted to say I I agree with Dr. Palmer um, about the uh, sweating. Sweat, I've, and that's a great way to detox uh, to sweat. And I think in you know, especially African American communities and other communities, you know, it's like we don't want to sweat and we live in air conditioned in the summertime and we're air conditioned in cars, but it is very natural to sweat and it's detoxifying. So I think we can't underestimate and you don't have to have an expensive uh, 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 go to a health club or have an expensive sauna. You don't have to, but just to, to sweat is, is, is a great thing and it re removes toxins. I mean, you lose minerals and you should replace them when you sweat and hydrate, but I think that's excellent to, to think about. And so we need to encourage that more often. And so, you know, so, you know, we may have to take more showers, but you know, that's a great way to detox. Excellent, excellent statement. That's what I mean, sweating and, and moving about uh, uh, this simple, I mean, very, we're talking about very simple yeah. things. So Veda says sweating messes up our hair, makeup, and our clothing. <laughs> well, it's better walk better to walk around with messed up makeup, messed up hair than glyphosate in your in your uh, <laughs> in your in your your body. I remember I was a a, a medical student, and uh, I was on a neurosurgical service, and it was a very harsh attending. It was pretty harsh on the residents. So I remember there's a resident and he was getting on a case about you know I, I forget she didn't answer a page in time or something and you know she was on call you know on call to sleep at the hospital and so she said well was, you know i had to brush my teeth or something like that <laughs> he says better for your teeth to fall out <laughs> but yeah. but but no, on a, on a real, on a, in a practical sense, though, really, you know, you go and do it as if you're going to the gym, right? Yeah. You put on your sweats, you pull your hair back, you wash your face, and you go sit outside. <laughs> so you're not you're not doing it as you're you know you're heading to work because no, nobody wants to see you just coming out of a sunbathing session, coming into work and you're sweaty. But no, you and on a serious note, you do it as if you're going to the gym and you just let your body just sweat. Yeah, yeah. Of course, that's probably why a lot of people aren't going to the gym. They're always in makeup and their hair made up. But you're right. <laughs> and again, speaking of makeup, I mean, a lot of makeups have toxins in them. So you, <laughs> so it's heavy metals and things like that. So, and and people put chemicals in their hair. So make it, maybe you should make up your hair and put no makeup on to start with. So that's probably the problem. You know, it's an interesting, you know, I never thought about that statement. We can't go out and sweat because we got a hair made up makeup on. Well, you got hair made up with toxic chemicals in your hair and you got toxic paint <laughs> on your face. And so you can't go and do anything, remove the toxin because you're too busy. You got toxin plastered all over your body. What do y'all think about that? Well, you're going into multiple levels of complexity <laughs> because I think, you know, again, once you remove, get toxins removed from your body, then you're need to use more makeup decreases, right? As you get things, because now your skin will clear some. I'm not saying it's going to be what you want it, but it will clear some because now the toxins are not just in your system because our skin reflects kind of what's going on on the inside, right? So that is, again, detoxifying the body altogether. Um, go ahead. Yeah. yeah, I just, you know, like to say, I, I know, you know, in that, the African American community, you know, we we don't want to sweat our hair out and sweat change our hairstyle. But I think more and more um, 
women and men are choosing more natural hairstyles, you know, that, you know, you want to maybe find a hairstyle that is sweat friendly, you know, and um, light makeup. And when you choose makeup, you want to buy makeup that is more non-toxic from a health food store or, uh, or there's some online, but have more natural ingredients. Um, there are also even heavy metals in some makeup and heavy powders like, uh, you know, lead and other things like that. And some, you know, uh, lipsticks and, you know, petroleum product based lipsticks, as opposed to beeswax or castor oil in natural ones. So we can be beautiful. I tell my patients, but, you know, more light makeup and more natural hairstyles that, that are not such a, as much of a big deal when we sweat. We, so we won't, don't want to live for our hairstyles, but we want our hairstyles to embrace our healthy living and makeup. So what do you think about a Facebook user um, who's anonymous? I believe breast milk has the same toxin with other, uh, we eat however, I believe the mother filters out the toxins well, I think the, the toxins build up in the fat mammary glands. So it's yeah. going to build up in the breast. I mean, and that's, Dr. Atkins said that they have, I mean, they have studies where they have found glyphosate in newborns. So, yeah, it, yeah, it is passed mm -hmm. to the baby. And see, we, I mean, we see atherosclerosis in, 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 in babies in utero. Uh, wow. And so, uh, you know, so you know this passed on. So once you do a transition, give your child... Mm -hmm. Calcium, maybe mother. That's about. You want to address that? You kind so, of. Yeah, that. I will quickly. So, because I'm plant based, I don't um, endorse cow's milk for any human. Um, but that's I'm the only one in in my, in my practice that does that. So when you go to any pediatrician, they're going to talk to you about cow's milk. So I take a totally different stance on that. Calcium is in our vegetables. As we know, that's what the cow herself gets her calcium. She doesn't drink milk. Um, you know, um, most mammals outside of the newborn period, so I just give a brief spill. Outside of the newborn period, we are the only uh, mammals on the planet that's still drinking somebody else's milk. We're not even drinking our own milk. Um, so that's abnormal within itself. Calcium is in the plants, and that's where the cow gets her calcium. We look at the hippopotamus, we look at the giraffe, and I'm naming, naming these animals because they're humongous. They get their protein, they get their calcium, they get their riboflavins, they get everything from the vegetation. So the fact, you know, us thinking that calcium is only in milk is a false, is, is false, um, but it helps the milk industry to keep thriving. So, Yes. So I tell parents, if you want your child to have cereal or, well, now we're talking about the glyphosate and cereal, but let's say you have something that you want to put milk in, you can use milk substitutes or alternatives. It does not have the same fat content. So you cannot do a direct substitution if you're thinking you're using it for calorie intake. But if you're using it to kind of appease your mind and appease your um, babysitter's mind and appease the daycare because a lot of times people are going to give you a lot of pushback because you're not giving your child milk and they think something is wrong. So to make that not be so um, heavy on you, you can use the alternatives if you know your child doesn't have any um, nut allergies because a lot of the alternatives are nuts, um, coconut. Now they have hemp seed milk, they have rice milk. So you can use these alternatives. Again, these are not the same calorie content as cow milk. So, but in the, in the event that you use plants, you need to absolutely, um, plant-based milk, I mean, you need to absolutely use, have your child eating vegetables. So now you need to concentrate on making sure that your child is eating properly and eating a well-rounded um, diet or meal, which includes a lot of vegetables. Great point, great point. And with that, we'll wrap it up. There's uh, a launch comment by the, um, the well, this Facebook uh, user comment is pretty interesting. Uh, Stay out of cold air so you can sweat better. They make a reference to the song, Summer Breeze Makes Me Feel Fine, uh, <laughs> which, again, that's probably something to that. But, uh, you know, I, uh, I'm, I've, I've been out in the sun a fair amount this, sun, this summer. Uh, 
uh, probably still not as much as I should be, but certainly more than usual. And uh, I remember on Father's Day, I was cutting uh, tree branches. And uh, I remember feeling, uh, wow, this feels good, nice breeze, a very comfortable day out. And uh, the next thing I knew, I looked at the, um, the, uh, my phone and the, the temperature was like 103, uh, but it felt very comfortable. Uh, and so, of course, I was well hydrated and, and what have you, but, but it was still, you know, something um, that I noticed that was, you know, very comfortable and I was out working and sweating. And so as you get used to it, you know, it becomes natural and it starts to really feel good. And, and these things are what we should naturally um, Can I add something? gravitate to. Can I add something briefly? Dr. Oh, sure. um, and so with going outside, because now the children are saying they don't want to go outside because it's too hot. Um, <laughs> and yes, you have to go outside in order to adapt to being outside. And I think I read several years ago about the nephrons and the kidneys grow longer when you're in heat to store more water. Um, so you have to let that physiological process happen. Um, so the first day or two, you might be um, miserable, but as you keep going, you'll feel better. And also this is on the backdrop of eating properly, meaning your fruits and vegetables. These are the foods that have um, water in them that give your cells water. And so when you go out, it will adapt versus if you're eating French fries, that oil that you're eating in the French fries probably clogs up the pores and you're going to feel suffocated and hot. So I, I also feel you can't just go, you need to be prepped um, to be able to do it properly and not feel like you're suffering while you're out there. I mean, eating your fruit and vegetables so that you can sweat properly um, and you feel and you eventually will start to feel better out there versus feeling like you're suffocating because you're eating pizza and French fries and potato chips. Because that's yeah. a horrible experience. Now, that's it, right. Proper hydration and elimination of toxic foods are two key things. And that's why people are allergic to the outdoors or can't tolerate the outdoors because, you know, what's inside your body is not sufficient to allow you to adapt to that natural environment. It's not natural to be allergic to nature. So if you are, then you need to make some adjustment, about adjustment in what you're consuming first and foremost. And um, I think that'll help make um make things much better for you uh well this is great colleagues thank you very much for uh an enlightening discussion you know we talked about glyphosate but we use that as a focal point of our discussion uh but it really applies to everything and so uh thank you very much for your uh, uh enlightenment dr Atkins and dr palmer and i look forward to seeing you guys next week i'll uh, see you backstage as we close out um, for another Monday. Um, well, anyway, uh, as usual, I learned a lot in these discussions. I hope you learned the same. Um, if you haven't had a chance to do so, give us a thumbs up, uh, uh, hit the like button and share, subscribe if you hadn't had a chance to subscribe uh, with, um, and, and of course, as I said, share this with loved ones, friends, and anyone who will benefit from this uh, information. Uh, we uh, appreciate your support. Thanks for joining us tonight. And until next time, keep it fresh, natural, and live.